Victory in Europe to the Navy just means more planes, more ships for the achievement of victory over Japan. Ships like the new carrier Franklin D. Roosevelt. Mrs. Roosevelt, with Mrs. Towers, wife of Vice Admiral Towers and sponsor of the carrier, arrives for the christening, followed by Fleet Admiral King and General Marshall. As the FDR is launched, eyes turn to the Pacific and to the words of Fleet Admiral Ernest J. King. We never did and never shall underestimate the staying powers of the Japanese. They are tough, resourceful, and as devoted to their cause as we are to ours. Knowing this from hard experience, we are even now expanding our Navy. At this moment, your Navy faces new tasks in the Pacific. Within two weeks of the capture of Iwo Jima, the forces of the Navy were on their way further westward, west to Okinawa, 370 miles south of Japan. It was the greatest invasion armada ever to operate in the Pacific. 1,400 ships took part. Carriers buzzed with planes rising to the attack as powerful Corsairs, Hell Divers, and Hellcats zoomed off on missions preparatory to the invasion itself. Below the clouds lay Okinawa and targets of number one priority, airstrips and Japanese bombers helpless on the ground. A Hell Diver sweeps over the harbor and drops its deadly burden on docks and shipping. Through the gun camera's eye is seen a rocket attack on an industrial area as incendiary bullets and rockets scream down on Jap factories. Meanwhile at sea there developed a vicious battle between carrier defenders and Japanese land-based bombers, fighters and suicide squadrons of the Kamikaze Corps. But the squadrons defending our carriers and the marksmanship of Navy anti-aircraft gunners proved too much for the Jap attack. Only 10% of the Jap planes got away. Tracers show the gunner's lead on his target. Then another Jap plane bursts into flames and hurtles into the China Sea. In two days, 471 Jap planes went spinning down. Then it was time for the big guns to move in, to move in and explode the defenses of Okinawa. The guns of hundreds of ships opened up at almost point-blank range, plastering the beaches and the roads and airfields inland with tons of explosives. Big guns, little guns, all guns went to work. The lessons learned from Tarawa to Iwo Jima were applied a hundredfold at Okinawa. known to modern naval science went into the annihilating bombardment of the targets in the Okinawa operation. Four days prior to L Day, Love Day in Navy voice code, battleships, cruisers, aircraft, destroyers, and hundreds of rocket ships threw everything in the book at the target. Here in force were the rocket ships seen now for the first time in an almost 4th of July display of might. This is proof of a pudding cooked up months ago when the Navy accelerated a rocket production program from a few hundred thousand dollars to several millions. Rockets for just such targets as the beaches of Okinawa. Then, in familiar pattern, the assault forces went ashore. The pictures look like those at Tinian, at Guam, at Iwo Jima. We've seen them before. But every time for these men, there's blood ahead and death. Ahead lay death for Ernie Pyle as he went ashore with the first waves. When they hit the beach at Okinawa, they laughed and joked and asked each other, where are the Japs? Where's the mortar fire? Where are the nine-inch rockets? For between surprise and bombardment, 
There were no Japs left to defend the beach near Yantan on April 1st. But as our forces moved inland across the island, which varies from 2 to 20 miles wide, and unlike Iwo Jima, it's 60 miles long, they began to tap the nests of Jap resistance. The Japs had lost the beaches, and in their lack of strategic resistance, had lost the chance to hold the island. But in retiring, they prepared to sell themselves dearly. It seemed easy at first. Now it got tougher. And the bodies and the wounded were not all Japs. Here were our men, men who came from Iowa and Missouri and Maine and Alabama, men whose only thought was to do a job and get it done, whether it took eight hours or 80, whether there was overtime or not, whether there was beer or K-ration at the end of the day. For it was a job that had to be done, and they were there to do it. To them, we owe the future of the life we like to lead. Nowadays, thanks to the planes and personnel of the Naval Air Transport Service, the needs of our wounded men are met with all possible dispatch. Plasma and live blood flow in a steady stream across the Pacific in giant Navy transports, and wounded men are brought back almost in a matter of hours to the quiet cleanliness of home hospitals and expert medical care. The job in the Pacific, on Okinawa, on the next island, continues to its bitter end. A mean, dangerous, deadly job of routing out a fanatical foe. Spiritually hypnotized with an almost drunken zeal for suicidal battle, the Japs hide in their caves, have to be blasted out with grenades, with gasoline, with dynamite and flame. Japs surrender, but they are few and far between. On Okinawa, when we had killed 46,000 of the enemy, we had captured only a thousand prisoners. On the approaches to Tokyo, there was no VE day. The battle against a ruthless and fanatical enemy could not stop for celebration. Japan and its people fight to the death. We in America are in that same death struggle. Our fighting men will not give up. No more can we surrender here at home.